Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. Today we got a ton of articles to cover and a lot a lot a lot of crypto news and I think one of the main reasons for that is that the prices are doing insane right now. I mean Bitcoin is plus 15%, Ethereum plus 11, XRP also plus 11, it's completely crazy. But guys, if you want to support the channel, please press the like button and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. I appreciate it immensely. And also, make sure you comment down below if you're still holding crypto or not. And let's get into today's episode. So first of all, comes from XRP Crypto Legend. He says, Bank of America online event about blockchain technology. So yes, the Bank of America has possibly a live session right now explaining to all the people watching more and more about blockchain tech and actually this is something i haven't expressed too often but i think this stuff is is amazing like a 10 out of 10 on the ranking just because i really love when these mainstream entities try to explain more strange and abstract concepts like blockchain which is for a lot of people really really weird to understand and also more decentralized things you know, whenever they try to explain it, even though <laughs> coincidentally it says centralized right here. The point is, you know, they're, they're trying to explain more things to you, which on the daily, traditionally, you don't really hear too often, you know. And, and, and I really love that they're doing that type of stuff. So definitely something very good from the Bank of America. Love to see that type of stuff. Uh, could also be that they're kind of preparing the people for crypto. They're trying to prepare people for fintech or, or XRP or Ripple. Could definitely be so because, of course... A lot of your customers are going to get angry if you all of a sudden throw crypto on their heads without them knowing about it. But if you ease them in, it might become a lot easier down the road. All right. XRP Stewart has also shared on Twitter, David Andolfato, the Vice President of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, March 31st, 2014. So take a little bit of a step back as this is an article or a presentation from roughly six years ago. But still, it stated... Wither central banks. Well-run central banks should welcome the emerging competition. There is, in my view, room for beneficial coexistence. For example, a politically independent Fed operating an elastic currency supply with congressionally assigned mandates, e.g. price level stability. Together with Ripple, a currency agnostic P2P payment system to facilitate lost uh, to facilitate low cost payments. Funny is that they they're calling it P2P for Ripple. I mean it, it's true it can work P2P, but actually most often I see B2B when we're talking about Ripple, just because it's most of the time talking about a financial institution to another financial institution, you know, and we're not that much talking about P2P in the direct sense because it's still. You know, uh, the person kind of has to apply for the transaction, but still there's there's intermediary financial institutions which do all the, the work, and then it's still considered B2B, I think. But pretty cool, though. Pretty cool to see that. So, you know, a couple years old, still some cool stuff. Jeff Hardy has shared on Twitter, Things on the XRP front are looking lively this morning. South Korea has got something going on. And it's a little bit of, a, of another video of, of just how xrp is moving and flowing a little bit right now it's doing pretty damn juicy a lot is being traded right now a lot is going on and it's moving very very quickly very nicely uh, it's something you can see every single day yes but it's just ramping up a little bit and uh, i think it's pretty cool to see that as well last but not least for the xrp side of today in 2017 xrp rose from 0 0.005 to three dollars and eighty cents those 70,000% gains will take us from $0.10 to $70 in 2020. So most likely he's talking about the lowest points of the year. In 2017, about zero, a half a cent. 2009, or 2020, roughly maybe $0.10, cents, maybe 11 And um, we'll get to those newer points if we get another rise like that going on. Now, is it going to happen? Most likely not because it's, 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 it's really... It's a different scenario, right? We're talking here about from unknown to very, very known. And here we're talking from very known to very, very, very known, which is quite a more difficult step to make. Uh, however, over a longer period of time, I think it's possible. 
However, 2020, I, I, I ain't going for that one, guys. I don't believe that. But it's the crypto bull who's there to give you guys a, you know, a little bit of a warm feeling in your belly <laughs> with, the, with the nice prediction. So, of course, you can see it from both sides. Um, I guess he's just doing the entertainment job very well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving over into Cardano. Because today, a little bit about Cardano, XRP, VeChain, Stellar. I think that's a good mix to go for. Stel or Cardano ADA is looking to challenge subscription industry, launches African initiative. Cardano ADA, an ambitious blockchain project developed by IOHK and a couple of others, is looking to challenge the subscription industry with its Ouroboros protocol. The Cardano Foundation has also announced that it will be utilizing the newly formed South African National Blockchain Alliance, SANBA, to further explore ways to use blockchain technology in the region. So this is actually something really quite new. I had not heard about this ever in any of the talks before. So really big shout out to Crypto Slate and to Priyashu Garg <laughs> for, uh, for finding this info. Good one on you. The subscription industry could benefit from blockchain. Well, that's pretty obvious. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely true. But I have a couple of bad points on subscriptions with blockchain. But despite the significant boom for... Um, Despite the significant boom the subscription industry has seen in the past few years, it has become increasingly difficult for companies built on this model to survive. According to City AM, we're nearing a peak subscription cliff edge, after which the model will become unsustainable for many businesses. The solution to the problems felt by this industry could very well be solved by enabling microtransactions powered by a blockchain technology. The recent advancements made by IOHK, the company behind the Cardano blockchain, might make it the first company to challenge the subscription economy. Ouroboros Hydra, an update to Cardano's Ouroboros scaling protocol, could allow the network to handle millions of transactions comparable to conventional systems, such as the ones offered by Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal microtransactions. Microtransactions, CDM reported, would open up lots of new opportunities both for users and companies, enabling customers to pay for individual articles, movies, or songs instead of paying for costly monthly subscriptions. So, of course, we all know that there are already ways to buy single articles, buy single movies, buy single songs, but I actually think it should be done a little bit differently, you know. I think it would be a very cool initiative if they allowed a mechanism to subscribe for a single day and stuff, you know, for you to just subscribe for... Maybe like minimum of one month, but then like you can also decide to pay each day if you want to, you know, like afterwards, you know, you just, you just are not like forced to, to roll in for another whole month. You're just like, all right, you know, you pay for any day you're still on here and uh, we'll just deduct it from your wallet, you know, something like that. Or you just have to set it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly how they would want to do it, uh, but I think there could be a couple of cool things in that regard, which, which could be coming in the future. However, the bad side I see to this subscription is that. With blockchain, they cannot just deduct it from your your wallet. They cannot just push it or pull it out of your wallet. You're going to have to send it. And so for the daily mechanism and even for other mechanisms, it's very, very annoying that you always got to remind yourself to send it, right? Because let's say, for example, you want to go for the movies. You can't just buy a subscription of a, of a movie, like Netflix type of thing, and just wait it out and just keep enjoying. You're going to have to push it out every single month again and again. Which is not a big chore, it's not a lot of work, but you're going to have to think about it each time for a little split second. And also that's the bad part about doing it every day, you can't, right? Or you're going to have to send the money every single morning, you know, 6 a.m. you gotta you got to wake up, like every, you know, hard worker, I guess. <laughs> uh, and, and you got to push your money out to, to Netflix to keep enjoying it. That's going to be very, very annoying to do, I think. But yeah, I don't know how they want to revolutionize the space yet. I don't know what their plans are exactly. I just know they're going to be challenging it, and I know they're going to be trying their best. And the second part has been some that's quite known. They just want to get this partnership with South Africa going on a little bit further. And um, we don't know too much about what they're going to be bringing, but they're trying to expand quite heavily in Africa. So I'm assuming there's going to be some cool things coming up out of that uh, relatively soon here as well. All right. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson says, Bitcoin is an example of low development velocity. Well, basically, Bitcoin has, you know, developers still, you have the Bitcoin core developers, but I think in comparison to most other projects, there's not such a central authority above it that's trying to control and trying to contribute to the betterness of the network. 
with Bitcoin core developers and just with the Bitcoin developers and miners in general, their, their purpose mostly is just to generate money and to find out good ways to generate money in the future and find out good ways to keep everything running, but not really innovation, right, anymore or, or not any new upgrades or crazy things. Because every time people propose big changes, it becomes a hard for because people don't decide to go with for the same thing. That's what happened every time. I mean, you've got Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, uh, Bitcoin... Pro I don't know, I guess there's a couple other ones, Bitcoin, you got a ton of them actually, that I'm thinking about it, there's a ton of forks, Bitcoin gold, and a ton of them, by the way, I have never claimed, because it's always a little bit sketchy to fill your private keys into them, you know, to get your money, and I'm always kind of skeptical, so I don't believe I even got all my Bitcoin cash even, or even my Bitcoin gold, or Bitcoin private, yeah, B Bitcoin private, I believe it was with Zach, right, you had to get the Z Classic, or Zcash, I don't even remember, <laughs> it's been so long since I looked anything up on those coins, gotta look myself, I gotta dig myself into it a little bit deeper, it's been a little while, it's been a little while, but yeah, by the way, Charles Hoskinson often does these live streams on YouTube, which are very, very helpful to get a general view of what's going on with the coin, and one of the things he stated here over on YouTube again, was some answers regarding the questions of the Daedalus wallet, and the current state of the Cardano network, Hoskinson said that the Daedalus has been a tremendous success, the only issues due to sync times happening to users with older Windows operating systems, and the recent audit by the company Root9b will be one of the many audits of Cardano's code, with the, comp with the other companies selected for the role in the future. And last but not least, Cardano's early friends and family testing produces Genesis block for the first Shelly update. We already covered that before, but just briefly mention again. Because that was pretty cool to, to, to see. All right. VeChain, IBM, SAP, leading in blockchain solutions for the supply chain. A data bridge report cites the VeChain Foundation, Microsoft, IBM Corporation, and SAP, among others, as the leading competitors in the blockchain sector for the agriculture and food supply chain. According to the analysis, the market has a massive growth potential, which will increase to about $1.4 billion by 2026. I believe actually this is, I don't know if this is a point, like a like a decimal point, or if they're trying to say, you know, $1.4 trillion. Um, no, it is $1.4 billion. Yeah, that was it. All right. Because we covered this before these numbers, but I forgot which one of the two it was. But yes, it's $1.4 billion. Crypto.com lists new trading pair against VeChain token on this platform. Well, it's nice. I don't really care because I don't use Crypto.com, but I guess they have a good community going, so it's pretty nice. A little bit of, um, of another boost for VeChain, possibly. Exchange lists VET, trade VET in Bitcoin, USDT, and Crow pairs now. Moving over into Stellar, Stellar Lumens aims for higher highs as social engagement metrics explode. Well, yeah, I mean, people have been really going all over um, Stellar at the moment right now. we are seeing a lot of people go really, really berserk. And I think one of the main reasons, which all of us could, I guess, agree on, is that it's because Stellar was one of the biggest runner-ups in this newer run that we're seeing right now. They took the biggest leap. They took the first leap. They ignited all of this. And thus, of course, a lot of fanboys are going to be switching over from any coin to XLM. You see that very, very often. The amount of mentions, the amount of articles, the amount of news, the amount of publicity, it all skyrocketed because of this major move. And uh, we might be seeing a lot of a lot of crazy things come from that, by the way. It's just a little bit of a waiting game. But um, Sentiment said, Stellar has continued its phenomenal growth in the month of April with social dominance and social volume continuing to surge as the crowd figures out whether it's run can continue that's one of the things that people have been wondering and really have been spamming me about all day it is a question of whether or not this whole move with with xrp and stellar being the first two to go will be continued and whether or not this crazy run that bitcoin is going on right now um is actually worth something or if it's going to switch over like the break of dawn and um kind of be gone and i don't know what to tell you guys yet but um i think it's pretty interesting to see it all though the SDF, which is the Stellar Development Foundation, actually also uh, said in their blog post, In the past, if you lost your private key, you also lost control of your account. Using this protocol, 
the user or wallet will pre-register the account and a phone number or email with two or more servers implementing the SEP, Stellar Ecosystem Proposal, and it will add those servers as signers of the account. No individual server will have control of the account, but collectively, they can help the individual recover access to the account. It's essentially a standard for a robust multi-signer implementation. So I've explained to you guys why I think multi-sig is actually one of the most amazing features of any wallet, um, but also why I think that this proposal is, is one of the stupidest ones ever. So basically, if you've lost your private key, you can get your money back with your, um, for example, phone number and email. If you have them collectively, if you have both of them. And I've told you guys before, I think those things that they're trying to add are stupid because it's it's relatively simple to hack somebody's email and phone number. I mean, you can SIM swap for the phone number and the email, I guess you're just going to have to force the hack in. But if you've hacked email, you most likely find the phone number somewhere in there. So in the end, if you then, you know, you don't have the private key as a hacker, you can really just force your way in and get it still, which I think is pretty stupid. You know, I, I don't think it should be that way. Unless you're going to also have to go with your ID and all that type of stuff. You're going to have to do it very, very difficultly. But then I'm like, well, if you're going to have to do your ID and whatnot, then is it truly that decentralized? Because who's going to conclude whether or not it's, it's really that, you know? It's, there's no normal system which can verify whether it's completely correct. Because uh, I can just Photoshop it, right? So it, it's going to be have to done, or it's going to have to be done manually a little bit, which then would take away from the decentralization all the way which you know it's always a difficult part to get a complete opinion upon stellar cryptocurrencies 190 percent rally could fizzle here's why stellar lumens's native crypto xlm hit a fresh local high up more than 190 percent in just one month the extraordinary price rally lacks concrete market fundamentals and relies more on macro crypto trends XLM reversed after testing a long-term resistance, hitting it could extend its pullback move as investors shift their focus on Bitcoin ahead of its mining reward halving. And last but not least, crypto price analysis on April 29th, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the other coins. Um, I just wanted to kind of ask from you guys, which of these coins would you like me to talk about more often? Literally, take your time and put in the comment section down below, do you like Bitcoin? Do you like Ethereum? Do you like XRP? Do you like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Litecoin, BNB, EOS, XTZ, Link? Put it down there, and I'll talk about them. If you want any of these top coins in the videos, make sure you put it down there, right? Leo, I guess, is the only coin, uh, Tether, are the only coins I don't really associate with too much. Uh, possibly also not um, OKB. I have no idea what this one does too much. I don't really update myself with this one either. But the rest of these coins, I, I check the news on on the daily. So literally, if you guys want it, just put it in the comment section down below. I'll do my best. Uh, do my best. <laughs> I'll check it out. Give you guys some updates. And I think it could be very, very cool. So make sure you put that in the comment section down below. I'm quite interested in seeing what you guys want. And also for this big run, I don't know where we're going to be heading. I think a little bit of this has to do with the halving FOMO. However, it is good to see Bitcoin rising because that means there's not something really crazy going on for XRP and XLM. And um, it's actually a little bit more of a general crypto move and crypto trend, which is more positive to see. It's simpler to work with. And um, yeah, that was it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody, and have a very, very nice day.